All right, here's another happy customer testimonial slash install video um, from an on-fair customer on for Autotain Joy Headrest DVD players. This one's from Mark in Beale Air Force Base, California, installed in a 2005 Chevy Trailblazer with tons of photos of his install in his Trailblazer. Um, Mark says, we're really happy with these and hope they will work correctly for years to come. Thanks for your awesome customer service and a great product. All the best, Mark. Then he goes into explaining how he installed these. Um, these instructions are pictures are from his 2005 Trailblazer LT. Your year and model may differ in some ways. Whichever brands you go with, I recommend looking them up temporarily hooking them up temporarily to test them out before um, doing all the permanent wiring. Okay, Mark purchased the Autotain 9-inch Joy headrest DVD package from OnFair. Included the extra year warranty and an Adafuse. His total cost was 285 He emailed several questions to their customer service on Saturday night, and he had an email back by Sunday morning, which is incredible enough but it also answered all of his questions in detail and attached a software patch to upload to the headrest that resolved any problems. He can't stress enough how impressed he was with the customer service. So, step number one was to remove the old headrest. You press the button while inserting a small nail or push pin into the little hole on the opposite side to release the headrest, lift off, and set the seat headrest aside. Okay, number two. You need to release the J channel that retains the bottom of the leather on the back of each seat. This is one of those annoying things that is easy once you've done it on one side. I found it easiest to slide part of it to the side so you could slide a finger between the two halves of the channel and separate them. <coughs> and there's two photos of that. Then number three... Use your preferred method of wiring snake to fish the wires down the post hole to the bottom of the seat. I used a length of one quarter inch plastic tubing, firm enough to push down, flexible enough to pose zero risk to the leather. Inside the leather is cardboard. You can run the wires inside or outside of that cardboard. I found it easier to run it inside the cardboard than pop it out of the cardboard at the bottom. Okay, step four, remove the front and rear plastic floor trim pieces to get under the carpet. They are simply pop up uh, of pop out of their connectors with little effort. Then remove the center B pillar plastic trim piece. Remove the rear seat, simply removing the two 18 millimeter nuts and lift it out. Using the Adafuse, number six, using the Adafuse, join both power wires to the one fuse. I strongly re recommend soldering and heat shrink for a permanent wireling connection. If your power ground wires are as short as mine, add a few inches of extra wire to both the power and the ground to give you wiring flexibility. These headrests only draw a couple amps each, so a 10 amp fuse is fine. I recommend using one that is only on when the key is on to prevent the battery being run down when the vehicle is parked. I use the rain sense fuse since I don't have that option and knew there wouldn't be any issues with it being overutilized. Okay, step seven. Join both ground wires together. The easiest nearby ground is an 18 millimeter nut for the seat back. Make sure to sand the paint off first. So you want to have it on a non-painted metal part of the frame. Okay, number eight. Plug in the fuse and bolt and the bolt in the ground. Plug in any additional wires for shared AV inputs. Route all wires behind the fuse block and along the channel next to the door. Number nine, using your wire snake, pull all wires under the carpet to the carpet seam under the driver's seat. Pull the excess wiring through and taking care of not to overextend the wire connectors at the fuse block. Number ten, using your wire snake, run the applicable wires from the driver's side under the center console to the passenger side. Tuck the wiring under the carpet seams to prevent them from getting caught on the seat mechanism being visible. If you're running AV wires from your head unit, you may need to remove the center console, but you can snake the wires under from the side to side fairly easy without removing it. Connect your wiring to the headrest wires in the seat. Ensure you are routing the wires to the side of the seat 
to avoid to the sides of the seat to avoid obstructing the J channel and be very careful to stay away from any moving parts like adjustable seat frames. Number 12, turn on the key and test your DVD players. If everything works as designed, turn the car off again. Fasten the wires with a zip tie to a fixed point to prevent any movement into dangerous areas. Bundle any excess wires. That's a great tip. Um, that way the wires will never come apart. And I would say tape it if he doesn't say that. Using number 13, use your fingers and palms. Pinch the two halves of the J channel together to reconnect it to each seat. This can be a little challenging to do the first time, so be patient. Keep trying. Number 14, reinstall the plastic trim pieces starting with the B pillar piece. 15, reinstall the rear seat with the 18 millimeter nuts to be very careful to ensure your seat does not crimp the wires when you lower it. 16, test the headrest again and enjoy. I'm very happy so far with the Autotain DVD players I purchased. Excellent build quality, and the black leather matches my TB black leather very well. The picture quality is excellent, the wireless headphones work well, the internal speakers are decent, and the controls are fairly intuitive. If you purchase these and have some DVD playback issues, contact them for a software patch that should resolve it. I did have to use a loop of electrical tape on the post to prevent the headrest from slipping down. They do not stay up with the factory post mechanism. So pick where you want them and wrap a loop of tape to hold them there. Please note, the, sol the shoulder seat belt prevents any headrest of this size from lowering all the way. And then he shows pictures of his kids loving it. He calls it the quality control. My three-year-old exclaimed, this is so cool, Daddy. Thank you so much, which made it all worth it. This is a fairly easy and inexpensive project that is highly recommended if you have kids in the back seat. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'd be happy to help anyway. Cheers. That is a wonderful install, instructions, and photos um, from Mark in California. And uh, thank you very much, Mark. Glad your kids love them.